one of the key arguments in my book is that a theology of union with Christ can reframe and give a much more multifaceted theology of ministry than many of the contemporary alternatives. One of the key ways in which I explore this in terms of cross-cultural ministry is related to incarnational ministry. Now, in the book, I give a survey of some of the different ways in which incarnational ministry is framed in ministry textbooks and in various um, theological sources. And um, I think that there are some very good um, practical insights in some of these works, and at times some good theological insights. And even I was trained um, as an undergraduate and in seminary in incarnational ministry, and early on that informed my own cross-cultural ministry. But there's also a key claim in most of the incarnational ministry literature which is highly problematic. And that key claim is that the act of becoming incarnate, the word becoming flesh, is a model for our ministry. In fact, in youth ministry and um, cross-cultural ministry circles, that is what a lot of people mean when they say incarnational ministry. That just as the Word became flesh in human among human beings, we, like the pre-incarnate Word, are to take on another culture as a second culture and are to immerse ourselves in that culture. While there are some good instincts that run behind this, such as the fact that we should not be doing ministry from a distance, but we need to have a self-sacrificial um, way of learning about another culture and coming close and showing the love of Christ, from a biblical perspective, from a theological perspective, and from a practical perspective, incarnational ministry is highly problematic and union with Christ offers a much better alternative. Let me just mention two things that I explore in the book on this line. One is examining the biblical texts and seeing is there any biblical text that says we are to imitate the act of becoming incarnate. And I conclude that there simply is not a biblical text that sets that forth as a model. But connected with this is that the incarnation becomes a model for um, ministry, for incarnational ministry, that is a kind of distant model. Union with Christ is something where we are united to the living Christ, the Christ who showed us the way of self-sacrifice and of service in his ministry, as Philippians 2 tells us about. And so it's a much more Christ-centered model it's a much more dynamic model that can lead us to self-sacrificial ministry which bears witness to Christ. The second major emphasis that is missed by most incarnational ministry approaches is being attentive to the work of the Spirit because it is the Spirit who is always the agent of uniting us to Christ. And in the New Testament language about the Spirit, it connects it to union with Christ, saying that the Spirit is taking cultures that have had hostility toward one another and is uniting them together in Christ and is making them one in a differentiated union in Christ. And so this is one of the key points of um, my book on union with Christ, is showing the ways in which it, it can give a dynamic theology of ministry, including for cross-cultural ministry, and it can dramatically improve upon most models of incarnational ministry.